And now, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Welcome to Down the Garden Path, where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice while doing our best to help you seasonally manage your garden and landscape. I'm Joanne Shaw, owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design, and with me is my co-host, Matthew Dressing. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Joanne, and good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Matthew Dressing, owner of Natural Affinity Garden Design. As landscape designers and gardeners, we believe it's important and possible to have great gardens, which are sustainable and low maintenance, and we want to help you make it happen. That's right. And so as we approach a new month here on Down the Garden Path, we are gearing up for spring by taking a look at all, all things critters, big and small and really microscopic all month long. Uh, So tonight we are going to look at actually how to get rid of some of those nasty little critters and uh, some products that you help you enjoy your garden to the fullest. Tonight we are joined by David Smorenberg from the Upper Canada Organic Products to take a look at their line of pest control products. So I'm really looking forward to that because we always have pest questions on the show. So if you have a question for David, Send your questions in to us here at instudio101 at gmail.com. David, so I'll tell you a little bit about David as before we welcome him on to the show. So David is the founder and president of Upper Canada Organic Products Incorporated. Upper Canada Products has been a family-run business since 2002. UC Organic Product registers, develops, and distributes least toxic pest control products in Canada. UC Organic is a pioneer in bringing plant-based pest control products to Canada. Welcome to the show, David. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, that's great. So you've been doing this a while. We have been doing this a while, yes, for sure. So yeah, because I'm getting on 20 years now. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Well, I want, yeah, I want our, our listeners to know that we first learned about you from a previous guest. Uh, Guy Rucolo from Blue Star Nursery, he, we spoke to him in the fall about, you know, having all the trials and tribulations of having a independent uh, garden center. And he mentioned you and said that he could barely keep your products on the shelves. So we absolutely were excited to learn more about you. And so I'm glad you're joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to Guy too. Yeah. Um, so one of the things in your little bio that you sent me, you said that you were instrumental in assisting the change to the Pest Control Products Act that made it easier for future people or companies to bring low toxic p- pest products. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> pest products to the market. Do you want to tell us briefly about that? How did that come about? Sure. Now, granted, we only had a small part, but we had and a lot of help, granted, from uh, the Canadian Environmental Law Association to... Uh, uh, CAPE, which is the uh, Canadian uh, Association of uh, Physicians for the Environment, to all sorts of some really good MPs. Basically, uh, when we started this back in 2001, I think I first got into it, when I was looking into this product, uh, plant-based products like garlic, our main product is sheer garlic juice. Um, You had to go through almost a five to six year uh, registration process where the same product down in the United States is exempt, exempt from uh, all sorts of registrations federally. So basically some of the laws that they had to change and some of the things they had to look at was uh, some of the uh, toxicity studies, um, garlic we eat every day. Uh, Mm -hmm. So basically uh, it didn't seem kind of logical to anyone around why um, we had to do such a huge type of, studies for just bringing spring a little bit of diluted garlic juice on your grass so uh, we had a lot of help um, and from that uh, there's a whole new uh, part of the pest control act that uh, has really reduced the timeline and, and made it a lot easier it's not simple but it's a lot easier to okay. bring products like this to market which is really exciting. i have to give it i have to give a hand to health canada for that they actually did a really good job on that Okay, that's great. Well, your main products are have garlic juice and or the other product has orange peel extract. Uh, so they're basically food based. So do you yeah. think that's kind of the future of the, the products that are, you know, those are things we actually eat, right? That. 
Oh, for sure. Um, what's good for us may not be good for everyone else. And, and again, plants all around this whole, um, all around our country. There's some great plants. Um, they all, they all, everything lives uh, in balance, right? So mm -hmm. there's some good plants, there's some bad plants for us, and just like for uh, insects and other pests as well. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a, there's, there's very little study on it. A lot of ancient um, cultures, um, India, for instance, um, even the Greeks, they did a lot of great work with, uh, you know, garlic was really good for wounds and things like that. So there's a lot of great benefits to stuff like that. Um, you look at an orange growing up on a, on a tree down in California, Florida, you don't see too many bugs going through that uh, the rind. So there's something there. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, so not, it's not like more. our apples, right? Look at all the things that attack our apples here in Ontario and Canada. Oh, for sure. From the scab to, mm -hmm. uh, but again, yeah, just, yeah, we, I guess with all our GMOs and everything like that, so we just, they're, they have, they're heavily sprayed to say the least, but, uh, but some apples are, yeah, they, <laughs> it's a natural <laughs> native product, but mm -hmm. so anyways, it's all good. Oh, that's great. So, well, let's talk about your mosquito repellent. Sure. What is it called? Uh, it's mosquito barrier. Mosquito now. barrier. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not something you, so we're not applying it to ourselves. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like perhaps you go home and you're going out on a date. It's uh, <laughs> unless everyone's eating garlic bread, it's best. <laughs> yeah. Best not to do it. Okay. Yeah. So how do we use it? So basically it's pure garlic juice. It's a high sulfur garlic juice and it's pure juice, so you basically you, you dilute it and you spray it on your grass, on your trees, on your shrubs. And um, yeah, once that's done, within about an hour or so, you and I will not even smell the garlic. Um, okay. And the mosquitoes will, so it's a, uh, and after that, it's uh, it, it repels mosquitoes and ticks um, oh, for weeks on end, yep. Okay, now it repels them, does it actually kill them? In Canada, we're not allowed to say it kills them. So okay. we, so uh, stay by the Health Canada guidelines and what's on the label. As okay. Everyone should, yeah, so we're just, uh, it repels mosquitoes and ticks. Okay. <laughs> and ticks. So that's a big one because that is something that people um, are very concerned about, you know, Lyme disease. As, much, as annoying, and I was telling you before the show, I am a mosquito magnet. So <laughs> I'm so excited to learn about this product. Uh, but I know you know, there's, it's still, it's itchy, right? It's not the end of the world as far as mosquitoes go, but ticks can be, bring a, a much more serious disease like Lyme disease, so. Yeah, they are becoming a lot more prevalent in Canada um, and they're not slowing down by any means. It's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and more and more things are coming up. They always seem to, as global warming comes up or climate change, a lot more are coming closer to Canada and in the Windsor area and Niagara area, our Southern parts of Canada. That's real tick country, and that's where our first, uh, even on the mosquito side of things, that's where some of the first mosquito uh, borne diseases start coming into Canada from those okay. southern parts of Ontario. Okay. So does the garlic work the same, uh, same with the mosquitoes and the ticks? It's still a, like a repellent. It's just that they don't like it. They don't like it. They don't want to stay in the area. Um, so it's, uh, unfortunately, they'll go to your neighbors. <laughs> Or they go back into the forest um, and then look to latch something, latch on a ticks, for example, look to latch onto an animal that's crawling by, and they, but they, they'll move back into the forest or away from the area that, um, that smells like garlic. Okay. So it'd be good to buy some for your neighbor. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So That's good to know. I think some, <laughs> <laughs> some of the garlic, uh, garlic, when you crush it, it becomes, there's all sorts of different sulfurs in it. And this, there's certain sulfurs that when mosquitoes fly into the area, they sense danger. And I'm sure that's the same with uh, ticks as well. So they just don't want to stay in that area. For whatever reason, it's just not conducive for them. So they just want to stay away. So they'll move back into the forest, bury themselves in the leaf litter or wherever they'll go. Yeah. Okay. So do you, you must then purchase garlic to, or like, are you doing the manufacturing of that? Oh, uh, that we like don't. a secret? Um, <laughs> it's not really secret. It's, uh, okay. this, is a, this is a non-GMO garlic. So it's all, um, but it's a, a variety that's grown in the Southwest United States. So you have it grown in California, Texas, New Mexico, that kind of whole um, area. That's really one of the biggest garlic growing areas uh, in the world. Um, okay. and so it's a special variety with high 
high sulfur, and that's what keeps these mosquitoes away. So they'll crush it for us, they'll bottle it for us. We do some bottling up here in Canada um, for some of our newer products. Um, so yeah, so we do a little bit of both, but we don't okay. definitely crush it. Uh, that's, uh, that's a specialized uh, uh, thing that these guys yes. do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though you're a Canadian company, it must be available then also in the US. It is, it's okay. uh, widely available in the United States as well. Um, it's in some other countries too. Um, uh, I think Australia has it, uh, uh, Italy has it, uh, or at least a, a sister product or a twin okay. product. Yeah. Okay. And it's also called, is it also called Mosquito Barrier? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Mosquito That's barrier. excellent. And they also down in the United States, it all started from a, uh, the original product, garlic barrier, which was used for agricultural use. Um, okay. And they seem to have, um, they stopped for lunch one time after they were spraying a field um, with garlic juice. And they stopped where they didn't want to go back where they sprayed. So they went across the road and they were having lunch and they were getting eaten by mosquitoes. And they decided to walk away to get back into the area, the, uh, the, the fields that they just sprayed. And there was no mosquitoes. So they, let's do a little more study on this. So they, ah. they found out that mosquitoes, yeah, do not like garlic. Excellent. And it's <laughs> funny because I, um, I attended a, gar a garden tour, I'm going to say 2018, 2019 uh, in Texas, 2018, I think it was Texas. And we did visit a garden center there and I saw a product, garlic juice, like a product for mosquitoes there. And I was like, how do we not have this? Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, you know, and we don't, I haven't seen it on any shelves. So that's why I was also super excited when Guy mentioned it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to finding it at one of my local retailers. So I find that fascinating that it's taken this long for a food product to make its way to Canada. Yes, it was quite a, quite a struggle to say the least. So yes, okay. but eventually it came around and uh, yeah, it came through finally. Right. It was a long haul. Okay. And so you, you can, people can buy the product from you on your website mm -hmm. or local retailers. And they tend to be the smaller retailers, right? All over Ontario. That's correct. Yeah. So that's kind of where we started. Uh, we had a lot of great success. Uh, they would at least answer your phone calls and they, <laughs> and when you call them up and they would be receptive to new ideas. Right. And we all started at the small garden shows and local shows. And uh, yeah, so they, they've been great. And we've, thank them all for our support on our website we do list a lot of the uh, garden centers that do carry the product okay and, yeah so they're and they're all over ontario and, and all over canada really so. all over canada as well yeah. excellent we have a few questions uh coming up on email oh, and the first one's a perfect one so thank you tommy he's asking are all these products good for pets that's a good one right Absolutely. Um, well, our, we had a Wheaton Terrier. Unfortunately, our, our poor dog just passed um, old age. So, uh, but yeah, he'd be out in the yard. Um, I'd be spraying my own yard uh, and he'd be right out there right afterwards. Um, so there's no issue because um, it really, uh, you're not really, you're spraying a diluted version of okay. garlic. So right. it's very, very mild. And mind you, it does smell quite a bit for about an hour or so. But after that, it's it's very mild. So a lot of dog foods do carry garlic, and that's a it, while it's still the same family as onions. Onions do have a special thing that's not so great for their kidneys. So uh, mm -hmm. garlic does not mm -hmm. have that uh, ingredient in it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know in your notes you mentioned you you're not necessarily spray even for ticks, right? Because some people might want to spray their animal for tick to prevent yep. ticks, but you don't really. Do you spray the animal? You uh, just spray, do not the spray the animals. Yeah, just okay. spray the area. So you really, once you get them out of your area, then you're pretty well good to go. There might be the odd one still hanging around. It's funny, we did a, a test pilot in Kingston, or one of our sprayers did, uh, and it was actually in a dog park. And after the first couple uh, uh, sprays, they had a tremendous, the park was filled, people were complimenting them, uh, that there was no ticks on their dogs anymore. And normally, these dogs would be going yeah. home with you know, 20, 30, 40 ticks on them and they'd be picking them off all night. So mm -hmm. uh, we've had some great results and the city of Kingston kept going back and spraying their dog parks. So yeah, it was great. Excellent. And more and more. Yeah. 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 Cause that's a high concentration of dogs. Like if, it, if you succeed in a dog park, right? <laughs> exactly. 
Exactly. Um, excellent. And the price point. So our next Karen, uh, Karen is asking um, if it's expensive. Um, so what's, um, sorry, I, I missed that. Okay, sorry. Um, Karen is asking if the product is expensive or what's the retail price of the product? Sure. Now, um, for instance, a small bottle, um, uh, basically just around a liter, a liter costs around retail around $50. Okay. Now that liter will cover just around an acre of property. So uh, I myself would live in a small, with my family, a small three bedroom bungalow, maybe 45 feet by 130 feet. Uh, that one quart or one liter will do our whole place almost all season. So uh, it's front and back. So it's a uh, really consider if you have a mosquito magnet, you're burning propane. So Mm -hmm. propane will probably to do that you're looking probably at two or three tanks and it's mm -hmm. not you know contributing to global warming with uh, noxious gases or anything like that yeah and you are uh, it's a little bit better cost for that okay yeah, I would say it's priceless. Uh, so if anybody who really uh, it suffers from, you know, attracting mosquitoes, um, yeah, then I would say that that's a very reasonable price. Because I mean, a, I mean, a can of like insect repellent and stuff is, you know, probably like 20 bucks or so, right? Yep. And not good for you. And really, the stuff that's really not good for you is the only stuff that works. So <laughs> and I'd rather smell like a pizzeria than uh that deep smell yeah, right exactly <laughs> and if you really really read the label on some of that stuff too you should be showering at the end of the night before going into bed uh make sure that yeah. stuff's on your skin so eh. yes. and who does it but yes well when you're camping and stuff you know what i mean that can be kind it's of a hard. hard thing to do right or at the cottage you know or at somebody else's cottage so um so david is saying that uh the stuff will the stuff make him hum hungry <laughs> Own and kidding <laughs> but yeah that's what i thought too like it smelled like everybody's gonna be craving pizza <laughs> <laughs> pizza garlic bread yep nice that's shrimp right. shrimp on the barbie yeah for sure oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh and so the, your next product uses kind of like an ext extreme opposite almost in the mm -hmm. sense that it uses orange peel extract yep now orange yeah exactly right from the rinds so that's where the when you say when you're peeling your orange and you get that uh, little spray in your eyes and it stings mm -hmm. that's basically the stuff that's in this bottle and it's you know it's a small amount and it's water-based but it uh it's proven to kill cockroaches uh fleas flies um yeah ants so those are some of the the big critters around so it's safe to okay. use indoors and it's safe to use well no broad spray it outdoors but cracks and crevices and doorways and windows and things like that yeah. okay so it really must be safe if you can spray it inside oh for sure that's one of the only uh products on the market you can actually use in a kitchen or above a food prep area um so we have had a lot of restaurants use it above their cutting boards and things like that too so uh, unfortunately, <laughs> got bigger issues where maybe a cockroach climbing up on the wall, but, uh, you know, yeah. but again, uh, you can't really spray a, spray some rain over there when you're going to get it all over your kitchen utensils or things like that. So, yeah, so it's quite okay. safe on that. Okay. Now, are you spraying the insects when you see them or is it more of a preventative if you saw them yesterday and you know, okay, I need to deal with that in the corner, like the ants in that corner, you know, by the patio door or something? It's funny because it works a couple of different ways. So uh, as a contact kill, it works fantastic. So if you have uh, a lot of cluster flies, for instance, or uh, or cockroach or something like that. So you can spray it right on them. Um, ants, for instance, it'll, you could spray them right on them. But what orange peel does, and it's in a lot of cleaning products, where ants will come in and they'll leave a trail uh, where they're coming in and out of your house. Um, being a, a natural cleaner, it actually cleans up that trail. So the ants don't know where the food source is, so they can't bring it back to their nest. So it kind of, it actually works in a couple of different ways. So it really can break the cycle. So it's uh, quite remarkable that way. Okay. So even the ants, uh, you know, the people that complain about their interlocking brick of their patios in their backyard, right? The ants mm -hmm. are, you know, especially with the older um, sand as a filler, I mean, those little mounds that kind of appear, do the ant, can you, can it work on that? Oh, for sure. Yep. I know um, even up in Toronto now too, we're um, you know, downtown. Uh, 
some of the parks, they're getting fire ants too. So um, they can pretty effective on fire ants as well too. So, but again, you get, you really want to make sure you're just um, ants outside in the yard are, you're only going to see a few and until you get down below, there's so many more. So mm -hmm. you really want to make sure you keep them outside where they're doing their work as opposed to inside. So stop them from coming inside and they won't be at best outside. They, they probably have a good purpose out there doing whatever they're mm -hmm. doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, they would. And how about, um, you know, we, and we can go back and talk about mosquito, both products, because uh, there's been a lot more talk. And I know we do a lot of educating here on the show about beneficial insects. So yep. that's why some of the things are a bit of a concern because it, it just kind of kills all the insects, right? Mm -hmm. How how do the butterflies and the bees respond to, to these products? Well, I, um, the mosquito barrier, because that's something you would be spraying on plants where the uh, butterflies and bees will be, um, no issue whatsoever. Um, again, um, you don't want to be spraying broad uh, flower heads or things like that. And, and really, the label says spray it in the morning or in the evening uh, for many different reasons. And one is because of uh, uh, insects. Another one is because of the sun because you don't really want to be spraying anything on plants in the middle of a hot day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's 90 degrees or whatever. It could really cause some leaf burn. Um, yeah, so there's different things like that. And in the morning and the evening, the wind's not so bad. So if you get some wind coming at you, you're not going to be going back into your house smelling a garlic, for instance. It's gonna, so it has a, there's, there's reasons why you might want to spray in the morning and evening. Now, the orange guard is a little bit different. Um, it's not meant to be sprayed all over plants, um, especially at that strength. If it can kill a cockroach, it can probably kill just about anything. So we don't yeah. recommend it spraying it on top of plants. Um, again, it can be pretty harsh uh, for that end, but around um, in the inside cracks and crevices, uh, things like that, no issue whatsoever. Okay. Earlier, you mentioned about pets. There was a question about pets. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Orange Guard is labeled for flea control. So cat fleas, for instance, uh, um, so you, even then you don't want to be spraying your, your cat or dog with it, but the bedding, um, the uh, quarter rounds, uh, uh, little things at the side, the baseboards, uh, you want to spray all the way around the area where uh, the fleas will be there and uh, orange guard will work fantastic on that. So it'll, it'll knock them off within a minute or two. So it's not like a, it's very effective, very effective. Excellent, and it smells excellent. great. So, uh, well, although I would think that would be a funny mix of, um, you know, garlic with the ticks and then the orange with the fleas and, you know, that would be kind of like a, I don't know, a cocktail or some kind. I don't know, there must be like an orange uh, something kind of cocktail out there. So, uh, but that is great to know because, and children, obviously, if it's safe for pets, it's safe for children. Yeah, absolutely. It's a funny story. If I can, if you don't mind, a funny story. My son was about three years old at the time and he we were, we were out in front of our house and he was one of those kind of little boys that always wanted to get into everything. Oh, daddy's doing it. Give me it. I could do it. And so we had this little one gallon sprayer, pump sprayer. It could spray all over the place. And so he was actually at the front of our property and spraying the mosquito barrier. So mosquito barrier and water. And a couple of ladies walked by. Uh, of course, they were uh, very upset at how I could be letting a little boy spraying all sorts of toxic chemicals all throughout the neighborhood and how could I poison my son a little funny I just excuse me just take a deep breath <laughs> it's only garlic <laughs> so it was a pretty funny day it was pretty funny oh my funny gosh yeah, so <laughs> that is that is funny you can see how that would look bad first of all that you're making your three-year-old do like yard work and then second of all that you are potentially letting him spray chemicals i mean well, yes, absolutely that. yeah father of the year yes yeah, so. there you go there you go that is great well hopefully you won them over because uh, and told them about the, the product for sure <laughs> I love oh, it. that is very interesting oh my goodness yes so yes so obviously if it's if it's fine for pets and for even birds inside the house for we had a pet bird yep absolutely uh now the the sister product of the twin product uh garlic barrier was actually um there was some great studies out there about the uh northern poultry mite and um so they, they did some great studies it was more for a barn inside but Again, they did some studies on the garlic uh, 
and the garlic right on the, uh, they're spraying down the, the actual hens. And they had some great results with that too. So not that we're labeled for that. And I probably might get in trouble from Health Canada for saying stuff like that, but um, yeah. it has some great, uh, great other qualities too, for sure. So, okay. so birds with the issue. I had a gentleman call me up from Oklahoma one time and was using it. Um, he was running an aquarium and he somehow got my number in Canada and he wanted to order some for us because he would put it inside his freshwater aquariums to keep some of them um, parasites off the fish. So if you can imagine. Mm. So um, I, yeah, I suggested he called the United States because, you know, that's, that's their yeah. job. So, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Now, is that for the orange guard or for the mosquito for the barrier? Okay, the, the garlic. Food. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. Eh? He's got probably has a <laughs> store next door and he called you in Canada. <laughs> that is good to know. Well, it is good to know that that is, so it's, it's beneficial for, or it's fine for us as humans. Mm -hmm. It's obviously fine for the environment because they are just a food product. Um, yep. Are both, so are both, you are getting a concentrate and then we dilute them. Uh, the mosquito, the orange guard is uh, ready to use. Uh, okay. We do have now, um, that's one of the products we uh, make up here for the mosquito barrier. We do um, uh, make a ready to use now up here as well. So it's all kind of diluted and, and made up here. So ready to go into the stores. Um, but otherwise, um, it is a, a concentrated product. So that's how it okay. goes so far. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is good because I feel like that's also environmentally friendly in the sense that the less less packaging, right? It can come in a smaller sure. container and last a bit longer if we're doing it ourselves. So you know, I think that's the way I'm hoping more products will go um, that way, right? Definitely, yeah. Packaging is that's another thing we're looking at. If there's a way to reduce it even more, but um, mm -hmm. and that's funny when we get online orders. Um, People always wonder, what's this strange? We everything we use, we try to put back into packaging. To uh, so you might see some back of label wrap to help protect a product, as opposed to using those styrofoam chips. And uh, so we are constantly reusing as much as we possibly can to stay, you know, just not to produce any more waste. If it can be reused a little bit, so right. yeah, everything we can. Do. All right. Um, so we have a question from Dan. He's asking, uh, does your guest make anything for pest control regarding mice or rats in the garden? And that is a popular one. We usually get one at least twice a month. We'll get somebody asking about, you know, rodents. Mm -hmm. So is, is that on your radar at all? We do have something potentially. We've been sending out some samples of a product, but more to keep them out of your house as opposed to okay. something in your garden. So again, you gotta be careful with things in your garden too. I guess um, mice and rats, um, chipmunks will eat the same thing, right? So squirrels will eat the same mm. thing, whether you, uh, whatever your views on uh, squirrels are. But again, if you have other, other animals that might come in, whether it's raccoons or, or mm. the neighborhood cat might uh, hop the fence or go underneath the fence or a dog. So, um, you just want to be double, you just want to double check and be, be aware of what you're putting out there too. So especially for okay. things out in your yard, I know because rats can really, uh, uh, you know, do some damage in your yard and you want to try to keep them out. Like I know um, a lot of mice, uh, especially mice, uh, perhaps rats as well, uh, bird feeders. So, and bird feeders, I know um, everyone loves a bird coming around. They're, they're amazing, the songs and this and that. But uh, when you're feeding the birds in the middle of the summer, they drop a lot of seed. The seed that gets mm -hmm. dropped, they're mice. Uh, mice are going to bring ticks into your yard as well, too. So, um, yeah, so there's, there's, try to put them away from where you're going to, if you have a bird feeder, put it to the far corner of your property or somewhere away so you can, yeah, that's a good way of trying to exclude them out of your property as well. Look at the source, why they're there. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So the, the mouse product that you're testing, are you still testing something to keep mice out of the house? Well, we know it works. It's just a matter of um, if we can get any uh, traction with any retailers that take it on. So the, the minimum orders are, are, are quite large. Uh, okay. It's basically, uh, it's from linseed. So it's a, it's a natural product and uh, it basically is like a natural caulking uh, that you can sand and paint over it and 
So mice and a lot of these other insects or pests are more habitual. So they'll come back into the area and they'll, uh, they'll see that hole they came into your house with and they'll chew into it. And it's kind of like a bad gum, if you will. So they, they don't really like oh, okay. it and they'll leave. And then, uh, yeah, so they'll keep looking for a new place. And if they can't get in, they'll go to the next hole. <laughs> okay, interesting. So then that <laughs> will, so that'll be on your website when it's more, when it's available. Hopefully, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. that is great. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hello, everyone. Hello, David. <laughs> Welcome hey. to the show. Thanks for joining us this evening. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's uh, great to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> meet you too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always great, Matt. Loves because he loves reading the 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 halfway point uh, infomercial. So I always say, I'm, I was like, yay, Matt's here. He can read the, mer the our little commercial. <laughs> and and yet, David, a well, breather to get a glass of sip of water or something like that. So we've had a great show learning about the products, and uh, and it's already halfway through the show, David. Where you you've made it through this far. <laughs> Time really does fly, doesn't it? Yes, it well, does. I'm just going to jump in and say, you know, thank you everybody for joining us here live on Reality Radio 101. I'm Matthew Dressing here with my co-host Joanne Shaw, and you're listening to Down the Garden Path. Joanne and I enjoy hosting Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting and relevant topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along with you from our research and from the guests that join us here on the show, such as David from Upper Canada Organic Products. So don't forget, you can spend more time with us down the garden path. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Our handle there is at Down the Garden Path Podcast. And you can find us on your favorite podcast provider. While you're there, please hit that subscribe button to be notified of new content. And please don't forget to like, share, and leave us a comment. We love hearing from all of our listeners. Don't forget, you can always write us here as well at in studio101 at gmail.com. Gary does forward the mail. And you can reach us uh, directly as well at down the garden path podcast at hotmail.com. And that's my little mid show segue. So I'm going to throw it back to uh, David and this. I've seen the questions coming in uh, before I join. So I'm excited to uh, see where this conversation continues to go. Excellent. Excellent. So we did have a listener, Matt, you can probably agree with me that, you know, at least a couple times a month, we get questions about mice in the garden and, and rats and things like that. So David was just mentioning yeah. that there is a product under development, but it's more for keeping them out of the house. And you're right that David, there's so many issues with as much as we want to keep them out of our gardens you know, there's still the squirrels and the chipmunks and the, you know, the birds and the raccoons and, and things like that, the cat, neighbor's cat, you know, so it becomes a little bit um, more of a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. I'm out of the garden. For sure. Yeah. You get into some of the baits as well. Oh. too, And and those baits can be, you know, if a mouse eats it and then all of a sudden an owl will pick it up or a bird will pick it up and then, or a cat will pick it up. And then, and then you have another issue again. Um, so you're getting rid of the natural predators so because they'll get sick as well so again mm -hmm. be very careful with some of those uh, products as well so okay just, yeah all right now are there now we've talked about your most popular and i'm so excited about like i said the mosquito barrier one um but what else do you have i know you've got a number of products on your website um and i have a question about the closet moth you know i don't know what kind of moth it is that eats your clothes in the closet but mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. are there any other, and do you have a product for that? So I'll just be asked my, my own question there. Um, or if there are other products that uh, our listeners might be interested in. Yeah, well, I'm not sure uh, what we developed. Uh, I'll start with the product, the, uh, the closet moth, if you will. Yeah, so we do have, um, we have one more for a pantry moth. Um, okay. The ones you may have in your closet are a little bit different. And there are some other companies out there that uh, may have something for that. And again, you just, you got to really be careful, not be careful with them, but you want to get a mixture of um, heat, for instance, works great on any insect. So if, you're, if your clothes, for instance, can handle the dryer, a dryer will kill just about any insect whatsoever, uh, 30, 40 minutes on high heat. Um, again, if your clothes can handle um, mm -hmm. a dryer, by all means, there's nothing better than a dryer. 
And then okay. take a look around what's there. Uh, do a good cleaning in your in your closet, for instance. Uh, cracks and crevices um, are always, you know, some of these big uh, retail stores too, they have a lot of uh, moth issues. You may not see it, but they love the dog food. But it's mm -hmm. funny, I've, I've been to some of these seminars, products that we don't carry, but there's, you want to educate yourself. But by the time they're in, they may go into the dog food or some other kind of food source. Before you know it, they're already gone. So when pest control companies, if they're not up on it, they'll treat around where the, the food source may be, but they're already laying eggs in another part of the, uh, of the building. So you want to stay on. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think. So you want to make sure somebody's okay. uh, if you bring in people or if you're going to do it yourself. Just yeah. take a look. Yeah. Try to track okay. and monitor and things like that. So yeah. yeah, I've yet to see a moth, but my cashmere sweaters have definitely you know, seen the moths, but uh, I wondered about that, about putting my sweater, it sweaters in the dryer. So, uh, but it's too, always too late, right? You've already got the hole on it. You know, it's kind of like, oh man. So um, I wondered about that. Um, but what other products? Um, we carry a full line of, uh, well, not a full line, but obviously we don't have the one for the, for the moths, but, uh, but we do carry a full line of other uh, traps and monitors. Uh, we developed a, with a, I had some partners at one point. I went into a partnership with them, uh, pest control companies. Um, two wonderful uh, couple up in uh, uh, Bradford, uh, Greenleaf Pest Control, and we developed a bed bug monitor. And um, there was one other one out in the market. It was round, but we decided to build one that was square, so it could fit into a corner on a so you could put it underneath your bed legs, uh, fit a little more snugly to a wall. And we were a finalist for. Um, for product of the year and over in the uh, United Kingdom. So that was quite exciting. Um, well, congratulations. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, they, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, so though, that company is now so busy doing green pest control. Um, I'm more of the product side. So we still sell a lot of them out to the market. We make it here in Canada, down in the Hamilton area. That's our, okay. uh, our, our person down there. And we do the rest of the work here at, uh, up here in Toronto. And then we sell them all across Canada. We sell some into the United States and some over in Europe as well. So it's quite exciting. So that's a great product. And now we're looking to make it even more sustainable and more environmentally safe. But uh, who knows, maybe one day we'll have a, uh, another uh, news release on that too. So <laughs> <laughs> we have many other products for fly control, yellow jacket, wasp control, Japanese beetles. Um, uh, we've got into some ant baits, um, but we just more just kind of move other green products. We're always kind of on the search for green products. Uh, okay. Something that, yeah. So we don't want to poison anything. There's um, again a lot of pest about pest control is um, making sure your environments. Uh, uh, why are they there? Why are the, why is the pest in your area? Um, you think about Walt Disney World down in Florida. It was mm -hmm. built on a swamp. You would think you would go there and you'd be just eaten by mosquitoes. If any of your listeners have ever been to Walt Disney World, you go there and you won't even be bothered by a mosquito at all. And it's because they've built, they've everything around them is built so it drains away. And if there's uh, any heavy rains, um, they will spray once in a while with a few things. And one of the products they actually do spray is mosquito barrier down there in Walt Disney ah, World, Florida. Okay. <laughs> But overall, it's just, it's the environment is built that way. So everything drains properly. Um, so you want to keep uh, mice out of your house, make sure there's no cracks and crevices or holes in your foundations. Uh, you want mm -hmm. um, less bugs in your, in your house, keep away the moisture from your house. Make sure the yeast troughs are pointed away. Um, try not to let things get too moist around your base of your house, things like that. You want less ticks in your yard. Uh, trim, up, trim up your trees so the sunlight can get in. Ticks do not like sunlight. So there's a lot of little things that your homeowners can do to reduce the risk of pests. And so if right. you can reduce the risk, you can lose less product. That's not good for my business, but <laughs> it's, it's better for everyone, right? So the less yeah. you put out there, the, the better it is for everyone, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely... I just... No, go ahead. I was just going to say there are definitely things that you can do, some cultural controls around the house that mm -hmm. are easy, low maintenance kind of things you can do just to make sure that they're not there. 
Oh, for sure. Before you start buying and spraying everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead, Joanne. <laughs> No, no, I, 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 I completely lost the question. So that was fine. <laughs> so I mean, I just, I just, I think it's fascinating, just the whole food aspect to it that it's that we're using food. So I feel like we're, you know, also reusing something we already have, right? Like using food, using garlic, using orange peel extract. I mean, I just find that a, a really fascinating uh, thing. And what, we, what's in the bed bug? Uh, the bed bugs actually is uh, we we dust them with. Um right now it's polished properly so it doesn't have any um just in case there's any scratches in the plastic for instance so we we dust them with a cornstarch product so the cornstarch basically makes sure it uh is extra extra um slippery so oh, okay. the bed bugs will fall in so it's, it's kind of a interesting it's like a moat so if bed bugs are coming from the walls to come up to and get you in, in your bed because you're the meal you're the attractant now uh, they'll climb through the moat and they'll get trapped on the outside. And if there's bed bugs on the inside, um, they're usually females trying to escape after um, having a bite out of you, a little blood meal, and they want to get out and lay some eggs uh, uh, into the into the cracks and crevices. So, yeah. Ooh, cool. Yeah. So interesting. I don't know if you guys talked about it before I joined, but a lot of questions that I've always gotten is or have received is because you're putting down a trap or like a preventative or something like the monitor, a lot of people are concerned that because you put that trap out there, it's drawing everybody in. That it's, it's like the cause of the problem. Is that too true to a degree or? To a, to a degree, I guess you can, you can, I can, I can appreciate that comment, but again, um, insects um, will breed. And so if you get rid of one fly at the beginning of the year, you think about that one fly will not then have 200 babies and those 200 babies will have 200 more babies, each one. Think right. of the multiples. It's before you know, you have so many flies and or Japanese beetles or so many other things that can be around, yellow jackets. Uh, so you, you wanna try to control them really. Yeah. Can you speak a bit too? Because we talk about Japanese beetles here a lot on the show, you can imagine, and nematodes and different things. Uh, we we have some really good podcasts, that, you know, explaining how people can use nematodes properly and make sure they're mm -hmm. more successful. And the nematode, the you know, the Japanese beetle traps. Is your product similar or? Uh, definitely similar. Uh, we carry okay. the rescue line of products. Um, so we, our focus is really into the pest control professionals. So we sell a lot to, um, so someone will come to treat your place, so it's bought it from a company. We normally supply that company, uh, you know, the, the, their supplies. So basically, yeah, it's a pheromone. And most of these pheromones and most of these traps are pretty similar. So they attract them um, and they basically fly into the wall of <laughs> the side of the trap and fall into the bag. So uh, last year was a really hard year for uh, um, getting these um, products. Um, a lot of the competitors or uh, parts of the products are made overseas. And so with uh, the cost of shipping and cost of this coming over from uh, um, Asia, it was just so expensive. And, and one of our competitors just stopped importing products. So our products are made in over in Washington state. Again, so it was, it's a little easier. We're, uh, to bring products into Canada, so so it's pretty good. For sure. So just going back to that question about luring things in, um, yep. that's usually the big one that I get is like the Japanese beetles and that pheromone. And it's like, well, I've put the pheromone out and now they're coming from everywhere. And that pheromone yeah. like spreads so far out. So how far do the pheromone traps really, like what's the area that they really cover? Is it kilometers or is it just like the immediate area just the immediate area and so you got to think too um you don't want to be placing it beside your prized roses um or things like that you want to draw them away from your roses um if it's our trap or the competitors they place it more in the middle of the yard as opposed to the sides otherwise they're they're going to smell the pheromone they're going to come close they might stop have a snack on the way and so that snack's going to be your, your roses or your <laughs> raspberry bushes or your, uh, yeah, your, who knows what, your ornamental for sure. It'll be an ornamental. So you've just spent some good money on. Uh, 
that no longer has flowers and leaves on it. <laughs> so put it in the middle of your yard. Uh, when they're in the middle of the yard, they have to kind of go for the, there's nowhere else to really land. And so they'll go into the trap, fall in. And it's better than um, having babies and going into your uh, lawn. And then mm. you get another issue with your, your lawn being chewed up from the bottom up. So the grubs, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, very true. <laughs> uh, just reading, I see a couple of questions popping in. Uh, da, 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 I think it was Irene uh, just saying these products make me want to uh, make a salad. I love the garlic <laughs> concept. I don't know if you guys uh, talked to Irene already. Uh, Ken says, thank you. Uh, love the show. Very interesting. Uh, saying welcome back, Matt. Missed that voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Matt, we're almost finished school, right, Matt? Almost, almost, almost. Two more weeks. Two more weeks. Two more weeks, everybody. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So, in addition to Japanese beetles, I don't know. If we talk about. We've not really talked much about wasps on the show, Matt. But I know my own family. As much we keep buying like all this nice outdoor furniture and all these things, so that you could eat outside in the summer, and no one wants to eat outside because of the wasps. <laughs> so, um, what type of product do you have um, for them? Well, again, that's through again through the um, rescue uh, rescue line of products. Um, they are okay. um, targeted directly for um, either yellow jackets. Uh, there's another one for uh, wasp hornets and yellow jackets, um, but they are targeted for them. So they're not going to be catching um, the honeybees. Um, so again, wasp, yellow jackets, hornets, they all do. A, they all have a really good place in the environment. They eat a lot of mosquitoes for instance, mm-hmm. and aphids and things like that. So again, you don't want to, if it's just around where your, uh, where your barbecue is or your picnic table or, or your family gathering. And, you know, again, <laughs> <laughs> you want to make sure that, uh, yeah, you can keep them away because you don't know who has an allergy, who doesn't. Mm-hmm. But again, um, otherwise, if they're in the forest, try to, try to let them be there. They're, they're going to keep keeping more mosquitoes away and other pests. Uh, so, but around your place, uh, buy something that's targeted. Some of those um, other ones with the uh, just that are homemade traps. Um, just make sure they are for yellow jackets. Uh, you don't want to be catching anything with honeybees. Uh, they do such an important job. We have such a uh, they're being decimated by everything from mites to uh, many different chemical pesticides. Uh, and we we need them for our foods mm-hmm. and for pollinating the apples that we talked about earlier pears, everything around. So we, we want to make sure those stay healthy. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Now that's mm-hmm. great to know for sure. So are there any, um, so as we almost are out of time, but uh, with our last few minutes of the show, are there anything, is there anything else you can tell us that you're, that is in the works, like another area of the market that you think there really is a need that maybe it's not ready yet or, um, well, again, we uh, we're, we have to expand on the label for the garlic. So we want to get into um, perhaps for geese control. We want to, uh, it's, it's just hard to find through the COVID, uh, the pandemic, it's been hard to find schools that'll do studies on them um, and s- specialized things. It's just been hard for kids getting out there and the professors. Mm-hmm. So we want to try to expand the garlic on for geese control. Uh, we do have some people that use it for it. And I've had great success, but again, until it's uh, properly uh, vetted, if you will, and we need to we need to get the studies um, as well for uh, a lot of the uh, indoor growing. Um, again, uh, the orange peel extract is uh, the, the product, the chemical, if you will, that comes out of the orange peel is called delimiting. Uh, limiting is a natural terpene, so greenhouse growers for the cannabis market. Now, um, even the garlic too for greenhouse growers. Uh, we love to get more into that and more studies into that. So uh, we think we can be really advantageous on that, some of that aspect. So that's kind of a couple of major things that we're looking at. So yeah, but again, at the uh, the orange peel product, the uh, orange guard uh, would have to be diluted for something like that because it's right. either smaller insects or a little softer, if you will, a little uh, not as hardy mm-hmm. as a cockroach or an ant. So dilute it, <laughs> save your plants, you know, so yeah, 
and uh, okay. not be growing. <laughs> <laughs> now, we didn't talk about how it actually killed, because I know, so I noticed you couldn't say kill on the mosquitoes, but you could say kill on the orange peel. So yeah. how in the world does the, the juice that comes from an orange peel kill a, something like a cockroach? Yeah, so it actually kind of gets in there and it kind of messes up their nervous system. So um, I, I don't really have too much... Uh, Again, using it around some places, I'm not into, into the front end line of uh, pest control. I had a lot of the studies that were done. Um, so, but it will basically spray on them and it'll basically break down their uh, exoskeleton. Um, okay. I've seen it lots of times with flies and ants and things like that. It's not as a quick kill as some of the other products. It takes two or three minutes, but it will knock them down slowly, but surely. I know it's, uh, but it's, uh, you don't want them uh, beating around your place because they're uh, cockroaches that make you sick. Some of the other insects that are around your house crawling inside your house are they're not always the best. It's better to keep them outside or not around at all. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Great. Yeah. I mean, I think that just the mosquito barrier alone, I think can really help, um, you know, and the fact that it is a barrier and mm -hmm. um and the area now after a rain so just to circle back to to that one of the first things we talked about for our listeners how often would you have to apply it well if, if you can get it out there like a, perhaps a day after it rains and ideally a couple of days before it rains so it really gets absorbed into the plant then once it's absorbed in the plant then the plant is the repellent so Really, so the rain won't wash it off. If it's a torrential rainstorm or you're getting some heavy pounding, like either small hail or some heavy torrential rains, again, as any, even a weed product, like a Kill X or something like that, will eventually get um, diluted through the plant. So you will probably have to do it. But again, it's all about the pest pressure. So if all of a sudden, um, if you have one mosquito come out a week later, don't bother spraying again. Wait until they're a real bother again or coming. You can sense that they're coming on and then follow the weather and then try to get on it um, every, you know, three, four weeks. I think you can get on the program about every three, four weeks uh, spraying your backyard. And it's really good for your plants, too. There's so many beneficials inside garlic, uh, selenium, the sulfurs. Uh, uh, they're great for the plant. They're good for the leaves. They're good for the root system. So fungal control too. So um, try to, yeah. So it's 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 got a lot of benefits as opposed to just uh, keeping mosquitoes and ticks away. So it's actually good for the soil and and good for the plant itself. There's some little micronutrients in there as well. So mm. interesting, interesting. Mm. So could it help with powdery mildew? Um, uh, let's see, where's Health Canada right now? I know, I know. They're not listening. They're not listening. <laughs> we, do have, we do have some studies on that. And that's something we're going to we, uh, love to get some more research on, but it's definitely promising for sure. Okay, for sure. well, I'll test that out for you because between my PD and my uh, nine bark, I would love <laughs> oh, to yeah. test that out for you. So I will uh, I will keep you posted. We'll Wonderful. have to do a, re a recap show episode. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and I know Matt is teaching uh, nursery uh, management, right, at, at, in college. Um, do you guys cover that kind of stuff, some how to um, insect control and, and that type of thing, Matt? Yeah, they will get a full IPM course. And so they'll look at all the pesticides, herbicides, and all that kind of fungicides and all those fun things and get to look at applying them and how to use them and those cool side effects and benefits or the not so cool <laughs> side effects and benefits yeah. that's, that's right that's just right. talk organic in that one like we are tonight <laughs> that's, right. that's right read the label yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yes the label so, is yeah i know yearly landscape ontario has that ipm uh, uh, conference have you ever been part of that david uh we have been into uh not necessarily on the conference side but i know we've been at the actual shows uh, exhibiting so mm -hmm. and again, we meet so many wonderful uh, small business owners um, and they always got some great questions for us. Uh, we don't, can't always answer every question, but every, every year we always get stumped on one or two, but it's, uh, it's a great learning experience. And it's, it's, those shows are uh, invaluable too. You hear what's happening, yeah. uh, out what's happening in different areas and uh, what's coming up, what's a problem, uh, things like that. So then we can mm -hmm. try to address it soon enough. So, yeah. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, we've definitely missed those as an industry, right? The last three years. So oh, hoping that uh, we can get them back again uh, next year. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they are invaluable from that step, especially to see the new up and coming things. You know, I think there's nothing better than having it in your hand, you know, oh, well, although I think having it, listening to a podcast all about it is always good. So I hope our listeners are enjoying the show as well as our future podcast listeners to learn, because I think something that's organic and food safe and human safe and, and also safe for uh, beneficial insects. Like I think it just checks all the boxes yep. uh, that uh, people are really concerned about right now. So I think it was just great to learn more about, uh, about your, your two products. And mm -hmm. so for our listeners, if they want to find you, your website is? Is uh, ucorganicproducts.com. Um, we have a lot of different other websites that can be directed there, but just, um, or you just mosquito barrier, Canada or mosquito barrier.ca. Uh, that'll bring us, uh, to our place or our orange guard.ca. It's all, it'll take us okay. all the same one. If you're looking for a specific brand, or if you just can't remember just mosquito barrier. Or yes. Mosquito okay. barrier.ca or yeah. So it's great. Yeah. Good. And we'll have that in our show notes as well. And for our listeners who want to, you said you have a list of retailers. So mm -hmm. um, you can check out, I know uh, Matt Wreckers is the only retailer near us. I know Wreckers is near closer to you in Oshawa. So Wreckers uh, carries it here east of the GTA. So I'll be heading out there to pick some up. And uh, mm -hmm. so yep. if you don't have a retailer, if, if, you know, check David's list on his website. And if you don't have a retailer nearby, then you can absolutely order them direct, right? Absolutely. And again, whether you order it from us or from any of our retailers, by all means, if you have any questions whatsoever, there's a contact page. Um, just reach out to us. We're happy to answer uh, any questions whatsoever. So we're an open book. And if I can help you with anything like that, I'm happy to answer anything, uh, even if it's not related to our products. And, uh, okay. Okay. Try to help well, I wish you luck in your growth. Like, um, Matt, he was saying that, you know, they're growing slow and steady and, and not necessarily in a, ready for the big box store explosion, but, but, uh, but he's got a plan for it. So that is very good to know. <laughs> Um, so when I see it in Home Depot, I know you're, you know, I'll check on you to make sure. <laughs> but don't forget to support our small business. They are that's key, true. They are the backbone of our country. So yeah, we love our that's small true. Business. Yeah. yeah, like like Guy Ricola, you know, who told oh. us all about you, um, you know, yeah, those people, you know, put their life work into uh, supporting their, their communities with their garden centers, you know, from Christmas trees to pansies in the spring and uh, all of that. So yes, we definitely want to give a shout out uh, to all the small uh, retailers, don't we? And, and, uh, and, and support them. They, know is they are great answering questions too. So mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, highly educated. Uh, so they, they know the, many of the answers So as well. So use them as a resource. And don't forget Excellent. to buy an extra plant from them as well. <laughs> that's right. There you go. Look at you. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I'm going to thank you so much. We're just wrapping up. Matt, next week we're talking to Bob Reeves with Root Rescue. So it's kind of a different kind of, not quite an insect, but a different kind of uh, microorganism, right? Mm -hmm. That will help our trees. And uh, so, yeah, so it's been great. Uh, thank you so much, David. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Matt. Uh, you guys are wonderful. Keep up the great work. Uh, we go, you can use a good education like this. It's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in here live on Reality Radio 101. And we look forward to talking to you next week here on Down the Garden Path. Take care. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your host, Joanne Shaw, and Matthew Dressing right here on Reality Radio 101.